First of all, I would like to um, thank the symposium organizer um, for inviting me here and allowing me to share um, with you all Villagery's perspective on the system level change that requires when you try to introduce the use of drone into a health uh, supply chain of a country. And this, this perspective um, is based on and this perspective is based on about uh, almost 20 years of experience of using the system level approach for implementing, scaling, and making sustainable uh, system innovation. And specifically in uh, the drone space, Villagery started working in this space about seven years ago and um, started implementing um, pilot studies uh, back in 2015 actually with, with UNICEF in Malawi um, actually, Judith presented the, the results uh, where we were looking at drone for transporting samples for early infant diagnostics for HIV. And since then, Village Risk is implementing three, um, three studies in three countries, one in, in Malawi looking at uh, emergency delivery of oxytocin and, and, and blood uh, in the context of Martinana health emergency in Mozambique for uh, transporting TB sample for accelerating the diagnosis of TB, and, and recently in DR Congo uh, looking at drone for transporting a vaccine. To assure the safe and reliable and sustainable use of drone, we need to take a comprehensive approach and look at the drone as the whole system and consider all the system elements that compose an unmanned aerial system. Today, I would like to, to share with you a framework that Village Reach has been using to guide the development of this different subsystem element. But first, I would like to share with you um, this video. So you can hear on the background that they're going through all the system and all the system has to be a go to have a successful lunch. And while I understand it would be pretentious to compare launching a, a space shuttle with launching a, a drone, I think that there is a good analogy with what we are trying to accomplish in the big picture, which is really setting up all the system elements that compose a UAS. And so USS can be complement, can come and complement, not replace, but complement an existing transportation system to support the delivery of health product to the communities, no matter where they are, all the way to the last mile. Now, I would like to take a few minutes and go back in time 70, 80 years ago when trucks, 4x4 trucks, were first introduced to deliver health product. Do you think that all the subsystem elements that allow today, 70, 80 years later, the routine use of truck for delivering health product were in place from the very first day? Well, let's, let's take a look. Can you? There we go. So here's a, a framework that looks and compare the state of each subsystem element for trucks when they were first introduced, and now, and for the UAS. Let's let's just go through the through the list of system elements, starting with technology. Truck technology are reliable now, but 70 years ago, you know, trucks were definitely not reliable. And the workforce to maintain um, such a new technology did not exist. And I think we would agree with that. Now, what about the drone? Unfortunately, I would say that, that currently drones are in general not reliable in the environment, and I insist on that, in the environment where they would be used here in Sub-Saharan Africa. There are crashes, and that is normal. It's, we are in the early stage. Trucks crashed too way back then. They still do. But. <laughs> Drone for payload delivery 
are still in a nascent stage. And like every new technology, we are going through an extensive learning phase, a research and development phase. And I truly, but I really truly believe that it's only a matter of time until the technology, look at, I mean, what we see today, until the technology will, will be able to respond to the specific requirement of the last mile, the Sub-Saharan Africa last mile. However, based on, village, based on our experience, I would recommend manufacturers to come out here in Sub-Saharan Africa and test the technology in the harsh environment and for a well, prolonged period of time, not just one week, not two weeks, but for a sustained period of time to really push their technology, the limit, their, the drone to the limit and really get the field experience here where ultimately the drone will be used, not back in Europe or in US. And I'm a person, a big fan of, of this event because uh, this is an opportunity to start that. Now, I do recognize that it is not cheap to come and do extensive field testing, um, let alone here in Sub-Saharan Africa. But, and, and that the funding environment is really not allowing a manufacturer to come in and spend extensive time down here. But I can tell you that players at the global level are aware of that, and, and Villagers is one of them, and we are really pushing to influence the donor community to start funding uh, adequately to allow manufacturers and to allow uh, studies to be of more of a long term. People know how to operate trucks, drive them, fix them, do preventive maintenance, and the infrastructure associated with trucks is exist. But back then, just a few people knew how were familiar with this new technology, and, and just like today with drone. In, in fact, drone manufacturer uh, are still figuring out how to operate their drone, how to fix them still trying to figure out the preventive maintenance schedule, which is a, a critical component when you think sustainability, scalability and sustainability. Right now, very little is known about preventing maintenance because drones have not been used on a regular basis for a prolonged period of time. So it's gonna take time, but we, it's a journey. We are all in this journey together, but we are at the early stage. From the logistic standpoint, Today, logisticians know how to use truck to deliver essential medicine, for example. They understand the limitation, how to manage a fleet of truck. Uh, for the most part, people understand the cost implication and how to price truck. But back then, in the, in the 70s, for example, people did not understand the operational cost of truck. Just like right now, nobody truly knows how much it would cost to use drone on a regular basis for a sustained period of time. In fact, the true cost of ownership is still an unanswered question, and the presentation from Jean-Christophe was a, a good illustration of that. Today, there's certainly human resources that are trained and able to support and, and service uh, truck. But again, back then, truck were, when were the first introduced, they were certainly not, that was certainly not the case. And it's the same for drone. Local expertise is underway to be developed. And there are organizations such, uh, here in Tanzania, the humanitarian open sheet map, as, uh, as well as re-robotics, and other, many, many others, who are developing program to help transfer the competencies needed to ensure the scalability and the sustainability of, of use of drone. And that include, you know, that include pilot, that include technician, that include UTM specialists, data analysts, and so on. These days, trucks are integrated into the overall transport system that support the health supply chain of a country. And everybody understands how truck fits within the overall supply chain system. But when truck was first introduced, people had to figure it out and, and, and figure out when it made sense, the most sense to use truck, how truck can complement the other mode of transportation. Well, now, for drones, many governments and partners are trying to figure that out. But mostly, so far, mostly study that you see out there are, again, short pilot study, proof of concept. And, and the, main, the main two studies that you know, we heard a lot about is Zipline in Rwanda and Maternet in, in Switzerland. But to really figure out when and where drone fit into the, an existing transport system 
we're going to need more, we're going to need long-term deployment. And in fact, uh, we are actually still trying to figure out, figure out what are the, the use cases for which it makes sense to use drone, for which it's feasible, cost-effective, and that would result on a strong health impact, which at the end, let's not forget, it is what we are trying to accomplish, to support and improve health service delivery. At the, global, at the global level, Village Ridge is currently partnering with BCG with funding from the Interagency Supply Chain Group to identify and prioritize use cases in order to help the donor community strategize, align their investment to really accelerate the development of the drone technology for those prioritized use cases. From a business, from a business standpoint, business model standpoint. Um, the question is, how can we make sure that this new mode of transportation can be scaled, scale up and sustain itself? Does it make sense to, to have the government own a, a fleet of drone and assure all the costs, the associated costs, the capex, the opex, the maintenance, thing into consideration, the, the depreciation? Or does it make more sense to contract a private drone transport service? Or, or should we consider a, a PPP, public-private partnership, like it's happening in, in Rwanda with government, Zipline, and, and UPS? The answer is we don't know yet, but really how could we know since we are still trying to have reliable drones, we are still trying to figure out when and where does it, the drone fits into an existing supply chain, and still trying to understand the true cost of ownership of drones. Many partners like DT, DTBI here in Tanzania, GSI, and even villages are working to generate that data to answer these business model questions. In terms of safety regulation, Harrison yesterday gave a, a great talk um, about, uh, about where things stand in that regard. But what about cargo safety regulation for handling and transporting product and especially biohazard material like blood. Blood is actually considered as biohazard or potentially infectious laboratory samples. Now we are carrying, that's the kind of cargo we are looking at transporting. While at the opposite, the, the drone that are used for mapping, you're not dealing with that. So what about the cargo safety regulation? In addition, safety, in addition to safety, cargo regulation must address the need to conserve the potency of the product being transported. Because what's the point of uh, carrying uh, some product if the potency of the quality of the laboratory sample is not good for, for informing a decision around treatment? So regulation is also to take into consideration uh, the pot how to make sure to keep the potency, the quality of what is being transported. In regard to public acceptance, certainly the public accept trucks driving around but again, truck was some kind of futuristic vehicle back then. People were not comfortable around them. They were a source of accident and fatalities, which resulted in pushback from the communities and stakeholders. For drone, a lot of work is being done to promote public acceptance by many partners, FHI 360, UNICEF, GSI. But a recent extensive stakeholder and community um, acceptance uh, evaluation study performed by Village Rich in Malawi showed that misconception and fear of drone is still a reality. In addition, because drones are still not reliable, resulting in unexpected events such as crash, it's absolutely a necessity to continue extensive community sensitization, sensitization and advocacy and work with community leaders to um, community leaders and uh, to manage, um, sorry, community leaders and key stakeholders. And let me give you an example. It is thanks to, to a strong communication and advocacy strategy that Village Reads managed to keep the government of Malawi and the public interested and supportive of continuing drone study in Malawi, even with the recent unfort unfortunate events. So I hope that. This exercise comparing the situation when trucks were first introduced and, and drawn, drawn at this stage uh, really illustrates that we, 
we are at an early stage. We are trying to figure in all the, those different systems. And each of those subsystems are go, like in a video. And while we're not there yet, with the energy and the talent that's here in, in, in this room, we are making rapid progress. And it is even like today that will help accelerate the development of drone technology for payload delivery uh, in the public health sector and beyond. I want to finish by just introducing, by introducing you to um, um, the UAV for payload delivery working group, which is a working group that has been created about three years ago. It will group about 200, uh, we just passed uh, last week, two 200 members uh, coming from a various sector. There is an example here of who is, who is involved. You have public, private, donors, academic, drone manufacturers, uh, modelists, uh, implementers, and so on. And um, the working group, really, the goal is to share knowledge, share experience, you know, to, to learn from each other and really accelerate the development. And we organize webinar, roundtable discussion, newsletter has been sent every two weeks, and so people stay on top of the latest in the, in the space of the use of drone for payload delivery. Thank you.